down into the age or ages of Amen. Today is the fourth Sunday of the blessed month of Baba. And as we are speaking about the power of the Lord to heal, to um, the power over nature, the power over sickness, and finally, just today we see his power over death. <clears throat> and I'm sure this gospel is relatively familiar. Um, uh, not only do we see the power of the Lord over the things of this world, uh, or the, the demons themselves, or the, the result of sin, which is death, we see his great and uh, compassion. Even though in the gospel, it says that the Lord saw her, had compassion on her, but then he said to her something that didn't seem compassionate, even though it was full of compassion. What did he say to her? Do not weep. So usually when someone's crying, you say, don't cry. It doesn't sound like it's a compassionate thing to say. But the Lord, who was full of mercy and compassion, had a reason. And oftentimes when he said something, it was not just, um, it did not just have one layer of meaning, but filled with other uh, symbolism or deeper uh, hidden meat. <clears throat> so this woman of today um, was a widow, as we know. How many children did she have? One. And what happened to him? He died, right? So she seemed, in a sense, to be burying her only hope and her only help. At this time, in this society, um, the women had no voice unless there was a man. They had no help and no support unless there was a husband. And if the husband had passed away, she would rely on her sons. And so um, this last and only hope died. And so um, when he was taken away, um, she was bearing not only him, but also her hope and her help. Um, in the litany of uh, the sick, we say to God that he is the hope of those who have no hope and the help of those who have no helper, right? So all of us, sometimes in our daily struggles, we feel like we have no hope or we feel like we have no one to help us. But when we remember this litany and we remember the compassion of the Lord, we, we can should pray this same prayer. Oh Lord, you are the one who helps those who have no helper and you are the one who gives hope to those who have no hope. <clears throat> Um, the problem here, though, is oftentimes when we get into the state of feeling helpless or hopeless, it is because we are putting our trust usually in the wrong things, right? Um, this woman was from the city of Nain, which, which means beautiful. She was in a place that was beautiful. Yet, when she looked at her circumstances, they were dire. Um, <clears throat> and so uh, the Psalms tell us it is better to trust in the Lord than to trust in man, or to trust in princes, or to hope, put confidence in them. Um, and so oftentimes, when we are putting our trust and our hope in the physical things, or the temporary things, or the weak things of this world, then we will feel hopeless and in despair. But when we put our trust in the heavenly God, who is the all-powerful, and all-merciful, and the very compassionate, then we begin to have more hope. Um, also, when we look at the physical and temporary circumstances, it makes us lose hope. Um, because the Lord will not always solve our physical problems, but he wants us to seek the eternal kingdom. Right. So um, how can I really tell if I am putting my trust in, in the Lord? Um, and not in man or money. Even you look at the money, the money says what? In God we trust, right? Even the money is trying to tell us, don't trust me, trust God. Um, <clears throat> so, but how can I tell? St. Theo found the recluse, recluse sorry, was a contemporary um, Russian Orthodox saint who wrote many um, beautiful discourses about the spiritual life. And he says, if someone is trusting in the world, or trusting in man, or trusting even in themselves, um, how can you tell uh, if they are really, because sometimes we deceive ourselves. We're saying, I trust in God, yet deep down we don't, right? He says, how can you tell? He says, 
after the problem or the fall or um, whatever circumstances um, that are negatively affecting you, um, after this occurrence, the, that person falls and they're grieved and they reproach and abuse themselves um, uh, for it. And then, then they quickly make a plan on how to solve the problem. It proves, he says, that they never trusted in God to begin with. So if you're going through a problem and you beat yourself up for failing or for not doing this or that or um, for coming short and, and you're so sad and, and grieving over it, then likely it is because you really didn't trust in God as much as you should. Um, <clears throat> and, and then he says, on the other hand, um, I'll quote, he says, if, if a person does not rely on himself but puts his trust in God when he falls, he is not greatly surprised um, and is not overcome by excessive grief, for he knows it is the result of his own inability. So if we fall, so yeah, this is true. I am a sinner. I am weak. Of course, I, I am not always going to be successful in this world, regardless, even in the spiritual life. He says, and above all, of the weakness of his trust in God. So not only am I weak, but I didn't trust in God enough. So this is what the person on the right track is thinking and feeling when um, they come into a difficult time. <clears throat> he continues by saying, um, this person ends up trusting himself even less, and then he repents more, and, and he repents of his or her lack of trust in God, and he promises to try harder to trust in God next time and less in himself um, also the, the, the next time. <clears throat> so... Oftentimes, God puts these circumstances in my life so that I can learn this lesson, the, the lesson to trust in him and to trust in myself less. Um, even in uh, the, the prayer of the veil, which the priest says silently, he says, um, we don't trust in our righteousness, but in your mercy. Um, so this woman had nothing really to trust in, in the physical world, at, at, in, in her circumstances, and, and probably she even trusted in God. And this situation is unique because God actually, he's told her, do not weep. And as St. Cyril says, he told her not to weep because he was going to solve the problem for her. God does not always act this way in our, in our life. He does not always remove the problem, but he can grant us the strength and the comfort and the peace to endure it. So it depends on the situation and depends on what God is planning for you regarding this situation. He could solve the problem, or it could just give you the ability to endure it, um, which in a sense might be more rewarding than solving the problem altogether. <clears throat> um, so what is my job? Um, it's, it's supposed to put my trust even further in God, regardless of, this, of what he decides to do with it. And that's a hard task. But with the grace of God, um, we, have, um, we have the ability. <clears throat> so um, sometimes, like we said, the Lord will remove the, the, the problem for us, but if not, he will grant us his comfort and his peace. Uh, in the book of Revelation, we see um, the Lamb of God in the midst of the throne, who is the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, and it says in chapter 7, it says, the Lamb of, who is in the midst of the throne will shepherd them and lead them to living fountains of waters, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. So if God um, is wiping our tears uh, in the heavenly kingdom, what do we have to fear? Right? What do we have to mourn over except uh, our sins? Um, <clears throat> and so um, how, what do we learn from this? In, in our difficult circumstances, generally we can benefit from doing Two or three main things. Um, the first thing is we bury the dead. Who is the dead? Ourselves. Right? As St. Paul says, I die daily. Or it is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life which I live now in the flesh, <clears throat> I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Right? So um, in a sense, she was burying her, her hope. She was burying herself because, okay, 
all I all the trust that I had in this world is lost. So the only one once we we die to ourselves, we have to live to something or someone. Um, <clears throat> and so um, this is the part where he tells us, "Do not weep," um, because if we weep for our soul, we won't weep over the physical. If if we weep because we have ignored the heavenly, then we won't weep, um, uh, or sorry, we will be able to ignore the earthly. Even if it's lost, we won't weep over the earthly. Um, <clears throat> so we don't trust in man. We accept the current situation, whatever it is, because we are all in the hands of the Almighty God who loves us and cares for us. <clears throat> uh, in, in this verse that I just quoted from Galatians, uh, St. John Chrysostom um, was kind of, in a sense, uh, apparently criticizing St. Paul a little bit um, by saying, well, how come he said, uh, he said, what are you doing, St. Paul, making co common things your own and claiming for yourself what was done on behalf of the whole world? For he says, not who loved us, but who loved me. So, of course, he is not really criticizing, but then he continues to say, but St. Paul speaks in this highly personal voice because uh, burning with the desire toward him. He says he doesn't say this um, in, in this way uh, because he said, just like in the Old Testament, the prophets called God their God, right? He says he shows that each of us ought to render as much thanks to Christ as, through, as though Christ had come for him alone. I think we mentioned this before. He said God would not have withheld this gift even from one person. So the incarnation, if there was only you on this earth, he would have still taken flesh and died on the cross and raised uh, from the dead to raise you up alone, right? So we have to personalize this relationship with God and this love for God and understand God's love for you personally. Sometimes we're able to accept the, the fact that God loves the world and God saved mankind. But if you don't accept the fact that God loves you and came to save you, and has the power to heal and strengthen and, and bring you to paradise, then your faith is still incomplete. And, and, and probably it's part of the what we're focusing on, like we said in the beginning. Um, <clears throat> so he says, he has the same love for every individual as for the whole world. Um, so that's the first thing that we have to do, um, is to bury ourselves. But then even when we come to bury ourselves, we see the compassion of God. Um, the second thing is we do what we can be done. Um, and we do what needs to be done. Um, so i give a couple examples. First, King, King David in 2 Samuel chapter 12, after he had sinned, right? Um, with, and, and after Nathan the prophet came to him and warned him that his new son would die, uh, different reasons, again, than, than the woman of today. What did he do? He pleaded to God with fasting and prayer um, all night on the ground for seven days and seven nights. Um, <clears throat> and then he, he started to hear the servants whispering. If, if, if his servants came and said, no, you can't do this. You're the king. You have to eat. You have to rise. Uh, stop, more, stop doing this. He didn't listen to them. And then they started whispering to themselves. So it was like, he got the idea or the understanding that his son had died. So he asked, is he dead? He said, yes, he's dead. Um, <clears throat> so uniquely, what did he do after this? Hmm? Yes, he ate. That was the last, <laughs> the last step. But he got up, right? Um, he, uh, he rose, he washed, he anointed himself, he changed his clothes, he went in the house of the Lord and worshipped, and then he ate. And the servant's like, what's, what's going on with him? Like, first he was weeping and mourning and fasting, and, and now he's eating after the child died. So he explained. He said, when the child was alive, I fasted and wept. I did what I could to intercede on, uh, or to, to ask for God's help, right? He said, who can tell whether the Lord is gracious to me? That So we don't always know the will of God, but we can pray and ask for it, um, but he might not answer, right? So we do our best to ask and to plead for the circumstances and the situation, but at the end we say, thy will be done. 
right? Um, but he said, now he's dead. Why should I fast? <laughs> he, God already said, no, this is my will. Um, can I bring him back from again? I shall go to him, uh, but he will not return to me. So th this is the way we, we should try to respond. Yes, we sin, and, and sometimes we ask God to take away the consequences of our sin, like King David did here, but God didn't, didn't respond. He, he wanted him to face the consequences of the sin, but it only made David stronger, not weaker. Right? So we have to strengthen ourselves to let God work. Sometimes we work, and then we have to stop and let God do the work, and we do the internal work in ourselves. <clears throat> um, so David strengthened himself by prayer and fasting um, and weeping, uh, and he grew from this, even though God's will was to not answer his prayers or, or to answer his prayers in a different way than what he was asking for. Um, and so that's why the, the scriptures tell us to wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he will strengthen your heart. Right. So we wait by prayer and fasting and trusting that whatever God is going to do, it's best for us. Um, and this is how those who wait on the Lord will renew their strength. So we renew our strength by renewing our trust in him, despite what the, the end result will be. The end result should be, at least I am closer to God. Um, <clears throat> another example is uh, Joseph the Righteous in the Old Testament. Um, uh, St. John Chrysostom, again, um, uses his example. He said, you know, the, the, the brothers threw him into the pit. So he said, after the pit came slavery, right? He went to prison. After slavery, a plot. After the plot, a false accusation. After the accusation, a prison. None of these threw him into confusion. Um, that's why we call him the righteous. But he persisted in courage and hope knowing that God's words would never fail. <clears throat> of course, God gave him strength and, and um, a little um, hope uh, by, by his dreams, even though the others didn't, um, didn't accept what the dreams meant, but this was to, to keep him hoping in the Lord, <clears throat> even though years and years passed in between them. He said God could have fulfilled his words on the same day, but in order to show his power and the faith of his servants, he allowed a long time to intervene. So we shouldn't lose hope if a long time passes between when God supports us a little and says, have a little hope, um, and years and years pass. Same thing with Abraham and, and the birth of Isaac. Years and years passed after he visited, um, <clears throat> uh, or uh, after God promised that he would have the children uh, like the sand of the seashore and the stars of, of heaven. Um, <clears throat> so, like St. John Chrysostom says, that you may see the patience and faith of the servants who do not lose their good expectations because of anything which happens to them in the meantime. So we need to ask for the ability to persevere and to endure until his will uh, is accomplished. <clears throat> uh, because, like St. Paul says, um, he says, we glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance, right? And perseverance, character, and character hope. So even though we don't have hope in the circumstances, when the tribulations are tough on us, we have to have faith that these tribulations will give us the ability to persevere. God will give us the strength to persevere if we ask him. And this perseverance will improve our character, our Christian character, and we would grow in hope. Um, to endure further. Um, that's one reason why God gives us these tribulations. <clears throat> um, the last point is, like we have been saying, to put our trust and our cares in the Lord. Um, so sometimes God asks us to fight the good fight, and sometimes he says, just come to the side and stand and see the salvation of the Lord. Um, because... Um, God will accomplish this for you. The Lord will fight for you, and you will hold your peace. So how do I know? Should I fight or not? We should fight, and like I said, do what we can. And then when there's nothing else to be done, we stand and see the salvation of the Lord, and the Lord will fight for you, and you shall hold your peace. Um, so notice the word peace. So if we're staying aside, and we're anxious, and worried, and troubled, and say, God, where are you? How come you're not doing this? Then 
then we're not we're not fulfilling the commandment as as good as good as we can. So we need to ask for for this peace that surpasses all understanding. <clears throat> like um, uh, the common phrase is, you know, someone said, "Don't tell God how big your problems are, but tell your problems how big your God is." Um, <clears throat> and so this this is the mindset of the person who has um, hope and trust in the Lord despite the, the worldly circumstances. Um, <clears throat> and 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 so we enter the the rest of our life, hopefully, from this day, with the knowledge and understanding that these circumstances in the world will change. There'll be good days, there'll be tough days, but the Lord never changes, and His love for me never dies. And I need to trust more and more in Him, and less and less in myself. We will continue to Him now and from the age of Blessed are the